If you want an effective warlock in 2024, the right Eldritch invocations are more important than ever. Let's take a look at the best options, including the old ones that we can still use. Starting at level 1 and going all the way to level 20, Warlocks rely extremely heavily on their invocation choices. And because the 2024 rules are backwards compatible with the rules in base 5e, we can also choose anything in the old source books that hasn't been reprinted. Hey, I'm not a wizard. You never said I'd have to learn to read. Since this can be a lot to parse through, I've done most of the work for you. And in case your DM doesn't want to use any of the old stuff, I'll make sure to mark each of the invocations as we go with either this 2024 tag or this legacy one. Also, because the rollout of these new rules into D&D Beyond was perfectly smooth with no hiccups whatsoever, at the time of recording this video, there is a bug that only allows you to select the 2024 invocations for a 2024 Warlock and only the Legacy invocations for a Legacy Warlock build. Even though WotC has clarified you'll be able to use either of them as I've described before. Hopefully in a few weeks I can come back to this video and cut out this little explanation, but just so you know, the bug fix should be coming and I'm sure the devs are hard at work behind the scenes as we speak. In case you need it, I've also made a full 2024 Warlock guide here that'll get you up to speed in under 20 minutes. But the main thing to know is that you'll get to choose one single invocation out of 12 options as you begin and up to 10 total invocations at level 18. Here's a chart that indicates exactly how many you'll have at any given time. While you can swap an invocation out for another one each time you gain a Warlock level, and I'd advise that you do as you get access to better options, you'll really want to be careful here, especially if you're actually playing at level 1. So, starting at level 1, let's begin with Armor of Shadows. Casting Mage Armor for free this early in the game is definitely going to be a nice boost for your Warlock, especially if you're going with a melee build. But it probably isn't what you should be taking your first invocation on. Save it for a little later, if you need it. Next, Beast Speech is our first available legacy option that grants you the ability to cast Speak with Animals without using a spell slot. But you should almost never take this one, and we'll get to why in just a moment. Beguiling Influence is similarly pretty obsolete even if gaining proficiency in Deception and Persuasion skills seems like a nice option for a Charisma-based character. Again, I'll explain why this isn't something you should consider a little bit later. Eldritch Mind is a pretty reliable pickup for most Warlocks that'll make consistent use of concentration. Advantage on those saving throws will help you stretch out the mileage of your spell slots. But it may not be quite a must-have if you're building your character differently, or if you end up taking a feat like Warcaster, which already gives you this same effect among other great benefits. Eyes of the Runekeeper probably isn't the first and only invocation you're taking at level 1, but it can definitely come in clutch for some campaigns that revolve around any sort of puzzles or mysterious runes or languages. What says this ancient text? These nuts. Dude, do you have any idea what I had to sacrifice for this power? Was it these nuts? Yeah. But that does depend on your DM playing along, and you could just as easily pick up and cast Comprehend Languages as a ritual, so it's probably not worth it, and that's probably why it doesn't reappear in the 2024 Player's Handbook. Grasp of Hadar also isn't the first invocation you should be taking at level 1, but it could be a decent option if you're playing a melee warlock and want to drag enemies 10 feet in with a hit from your Eldritch Blast. Even then, it's worth noting that it can only be activated once per turn. So, short of combining this with other forced movement and a casting of spike growth like I did in this build, it's probably not worth the pickup. Lance of Lethargy is a similar movement option for your Eldritch Blast that locks down your opponents by sapping 10 feet from their movement speed once per turn but it works best in combination with other forced movement invocations, and may not be worth investing in unless that's exactly the build you're going for. Though, if your whole party is on board with weapon masteries that impose movement penalties and spells that do damage in a set area, this can actually get pretty strong. Move, move. Ah! Now, it's time to cover the options that you probably will want to take starting out. The Pact Invocations, beginning with Pact of the Blade. This feature was a pretty popular option in 2014, and now it's even better than it was. Essentially, you can conjure a simple or martial melee weapon out of thin air as a bonus action, or bond to a magic weapon that you can touch. Until that bond ends, you have proficiency with that weapon, 
and you can use it as a spellcasting focus. An important distinction here is that the invocation doesn't specify a restriction of only using it as a spell focus for your warlock spells. So other classes may even want to dip warlock for a bit of spellcasting and the ability to wield a weapon and a shield in both hands. Again, unless you have the Warcaster feat for some other reason. From there, you can use your Charisma modifier for attack and damage rolls instead of Strength or Dexterity, and you can change the type of your weapon damage to Necrotic, Psychic, or Radiant. You can only be bonded to one weapon at a time, and the bond does end if the weapon is five feet or more away from you for a minute or more, or if you die. Put simply, if you're building a melee warlock, you're taking this. Honestly, you may even be taking this regardless. It's crazy good in general, and it's that much better as your first invocation at level one. On the flip side, you may want to create a warlock that utilizes a familiar to do your bidding and increases your effectiveness both in and out of combat. In that case, Pact of the Chain will be a must have. Wait, Master, you might be trapped. Oh, right. <laughs> Why don't you go first then? Oh, okay. You'll learn the Find Familiar spell and become able to cast it without expending a spell slot. What's more, you'll get a bunch of special familiar forms that are more powerful and flavorful than usual, like the Imp, Pseudo Dragon, Closet, Slad Tadpole, Sphinx of Wonder, Sprite, and the Venomous Snake. Of all these options, the Imp is probably still my favorite with a fly speed, Devil's Sight that you can utilize since they're your familiar, magic resistance, the ability to go invisible, and a pretty strong sting attack that you can make great use of at just first level. Trust me, I know how powerful imps can be. But the new Sphinx of Wonder can do a pretty nice job of supporting you and your allies in skill challenges while dishing out a nice amount of damage itself. And the Sprite can be pretty tricksy with a little charm ability on their attack with no saving throw that can hold your enemies at bay. Regardless of what you choose each time you cast the spell, you'll be able to replace one of your attacks on your turn with an attack from your familiar by using their reaction, and that is a lot of value for just level one. Not to mention that Find Familiar, the spell itself, has actually gotten better than it used to be. Namely, you can now see through your familiar senses without blinding yourself. Let's face it, pretty much every warlock should take this one at some point. Oh good, you're back! Why don't you clean up that mess you left? Yes, master. Oh yeah, it's great. He does the dishes, does the laundry. How do you think I keep this thing clean, you know? And then we come to the Pact of the Tome. Probably the weakest of the three Pact invocations, but still a very good option for most warlocks. Mainly, it allows you to choose three cantrips and two first-level spells that have the ritual tag and count them as prepared warlock spells for yourself and you can even change the chosen options every time you complete a short rest. If you really want to, you can even take the Find Familiar spell and get a lighter version of the Pact of the Chain with some extra goodies if you'd like to be more spell focused. Some other decent first level options include Detect Magic, Identify, Unseen Servant, and Speak with Animals. You know, like the one spell that that invocation gave us earlier. And even though you're probably set with your Warlock Cantrip selection, it couldn't hurt to have a few more at your disposal. Now, I know there are only three packed invocation options, but technically there could be a fourth one. You will definitely want to talk with your DM if you want to take the Pact of the Talisman, since it was part of a separate feature from 2014 and it wasn't reprinted as an Eldritch invocation in 2024 like the other Pacts were. As such, I won't cover it or any of the invocations that list it as a prerequisite, but rest easy knowing that it was probably the worst packed option of the four available. Regardless, it could be fun to play with if your DM is okay to bend the rules here, and if you want what boils down to an extra 1d4 for ability checks for one person in your party. Yeah, it's not great. Aww. Then we'll round out our level 1 options with one more legacy entry in Thief of Five Fates. You get to cast Bane once per long rest, but you still have to use one of your precious Warlock spell slots to do it. Who are we kidding? You're not taking this. So let's just move on to level two, where you'll get to pick two more invocations from any of those we've already covered or any of the others that open up at this tier. And we'll start off with a great one in Agonizing Blast. This is kind of the quintessential Warlock invocation that allows you to add your Charisma modifier to the damage of any Warlock cantrip that deals damage and you can take it more than once for different cantrips. 
As you might guess, Eldritch Blast is probably your best bet here, but there could be some cool tech with cantrips like Thunderclap if you may find yourself surrounded on the front lines. If you don't take this one in general, you've probably got a very specific reason for it. Aspect of the Moon used to be a pretty controversial option and is the first invocation we'll cover that requires you have taken one of the packed options beforehand. So keep an eye out for that as we go along. But here specifically, WotC has removed the old Sorlock multi-class exploit for generating a ton of free spell slots. This was the biggest reason for taking this invocation, so it's fairly pointless now if you play a species that gets a similar benefit right off the bat like Elves and Warforged, so I'd probably just steer clear of it. <sighs> Say, have you ever dreamed of attaining unlimited spells and unbridled power? Literally, no. No, just me then. Book of Ancient Secrets offers some use case here if your DM is likely to leave any useful rituals and spell books for you to copy down. However, you already get access to some ritual spells with your base Pact of the Tome now, and this really only allows you to access higher level rituals. Most times, it's just not going to be worth investing in Invocation when someone else in your party can easily manage this instead. Devil Sight in 2024 is more or less the same as it always has been. 120 feet of normal vision in both non-magical and magical darkness. This is a great option, but you may actually be better off taking the Pact of the Chain and just looking through your Imp Familiar's Devil Sight instead. You'll get a lot more mileage out of your invocation selection that way, and you'll have an extra tool at your disposal. Unless you're planning to fire off Eldritch Blast from a football field away, there's not a whole lot you can do with Eldritch Spear. Even with Pact of the Tome and your choice of any cantrip in the game, Eldritch Blast will likely still be your best option. And while you may want the Spell Sniper feat for a totally different reason, it's only going to add even more range on top of this. It's probably not worth burning an invocation on unless you have something very specific in mind. Fiendish Vigor, on the other hand, is going to basically give you a free 12 temporary HP before every combat, and just about any Warlock can benefit from that. This is one that'll be really impactful at low level, and then you may want to swap it out later on, but you should at least consider fitting it in if you're not sure what else to take. Gift of the Ever Living Ones will give you some decent mileage if you've taken Pact of the Chain. Automatic max healing from spells, hit dice, and other features while within 100 feet of your familiar can come in clutch for sure, especially if you're taking damage often enough. Help! Familiar! I need help! Where are you? Unless your DM is really mean and never hands out any magic items, then improved packed weapon is probably not going to be worth it for you. The half of this feature that allows you to use your packed weapon as a spell focus has been rolled into the base Pact of the Blade invocation that we already have. I promise, you'll be much happier with something else. As one of the few completely new Eldritch invocations in 2024, Lessons of the First Ones is a big part of why so many old invocations just aren't worth it anymore. This will allow you to take an additional origin feat of your choice and it's one of several invocations that's actually repeatable. So why take proficiency in deception and persuasion with the other invocation we mentioned when we could just take the skilled origin feat for any three proficiencies that we want? We could take the tough feat for a bunch of extra HP if we'll be in melee often, or we can even access a ton of extra spells with the magic initiate feats. Not only is this one of the best invocations, but I actually think it's pretty likely for most people to take it more than once. It's very strong and very flexible for whatever you're trying to do with your Warlock. Mask of Many Faces is a simple invocation that allows you to cast Disguise Self without expending spell slots. If you don't know already, that's going to come in handy a lot, especially if you're serving as the face of the party. All right, leave the talking to me. Wait, but this guy's from my backstory. I know, and I'll be a better you than you can be. By extension, Misty Visions is another illusion-based invocation that offers unlimited casts of the Silent Image spell. This one will eat your concentration and may rely on your DM to determine exactly how much you can get away with, but it has a decent chance of solving a lot of different problems. Creating a distraction, intimidating an NPC, throwing up a fake wall of fire to cover your escape. You'll almost always find something to do with this. Then, free castings of the jump spell are, in my opinion, just not worth it when so many other solutions for maneuverability already exist, so I'm not a huge fan of Otherworldly Leap. Don't take this invocation. Of all the Eldritch Forced movement, Repelling Blast is definitely the best. 
Each time you hit a creature with a cantrip that requires an attack roll, you can push that creature up to 10 feet away from you in a straight line. Notably, you can choose any Warlock cantrip you want for this, but Eldritch Blast is definitely going to be the best fit, offering you up to 40 feet of forced movement at level 17. If you want to keep your enemies at a distance or just push them off the nearest cliff, you'll probably take this at some point. Voice of the Chain Master allows you to infinitely communicate and perceive through your familiar senses so long as they're on the same plane, and you can even speak through them with your own voice. This definitely adds some utility to the already crazy powerful Find Familiar spell, but it might not be worth taking if you don't have a specific use in mind for it. Ugh. Oh, there you are. God, I look rough. Oh, what are you doing? Wait, wait, stop! At your fifth Warlock level, you'll get access to another batch of invocations starting with unlimited castings of the Levitate spell. This one can be fairly useful if you don't have access to flight at this stage, but it's definitely not something you need to take every time. The Legacy Cloak of Flies invocation could be a decent option for a Pact of the Blade Warlock that wants to get in close to enemies and deal your Charisma modifier and poison damage to anyone within five feet of you. That's not all it does, and there's no denying that it is quite flavorful, but its limited single use per short rest will probably keep it off your radar in favor of other choices at this level. Then there may be some builds that still want Eldritch Smite, but it'll mostly boil down to burning your spell slots at lightning speed. For what it's worth, it is probably a little better than the Paladin's Divine Smite that deals radiant damage, doesn't knock your target prone, eats your bonus action, and can be counterspelled. So it's worth considering, but you probably won't see this on many of my builds. If you've taken Pact of the Tome, there is still some use case for Far Scribe, and level five is certainly early enough in most campaigns for it to come in handy with endless casts of Sending. It is worth thinking about, but you may not even have access to this invocation, and your other party members may not mind spending sending slots during downtime to contact NPCs, and there are better ways to keep your party in the group chat without investing an entire invocation for it. Gaze of Two Minds, however, is one invocation you will almost always want to grab. And if you've taken Pact of the Chain, I'd consider this invocation to be a must have. Even otherwise, it can still be useful if you want to cast spells through one of your party members while you hide around the corner or behind a rock. It will cost you your bonus action on each turn to maintain, but I don't think there was a whole lot you'd be doing with that anyway. Oh, I get it. The warlock's just acting through his familiar and hiding somewhere else. Yes, yes, I am the master, yes. <laughs> Gift of the Depths is definitely useful in a seafaring campaign that would see you benefit often from a swim speed and the ability to breathe underwater. Outside of that, you're probably not taking this unless your plan is to have it float you through a small subplot in your campaign where it could be useful and then get replaced later on. If you're planning to use your Pact of the Chain Familiar in combat, you're probably gonna wanna pick up Investment of the Chain Master. Gaining a bonus action attack command, giving them a flying or swimming speed, changing their damage types, allowing them to use your spell save DC for their own effects, and giving them resistance to any instance of damage as a reaction is all way too good to pass up. There's a lot to love here. And if you're planning on utilizing the Hex spell, Maddening Hex is one invocation you should consider. It gives your Warlock something to do with your bonus action and allows you to deal your Charisma modifier and extra psychic damage to hexed creatures and those within five feet of them. This can also work with other curse effects like Hexblade's Curse and Sign of Ill Omen, but I'd even call it a must have for great old one Warlocks that will probably be using the Hex spell specifically pretty often. Master of Myriad Forms is basically a stronger version of Mask of Many Faces as it allows you to cast Alter Self without spending a spell slot. It could be worth switching out, but keep in mind that while it has the same one hour spell duration, it will require your concentration where Disguise Self does not. For that reason, it is not as useful in my book, but you may have something specific in mind for it with that swim speed or the natural weapons that it can give you. Meyer the Mind says you can cast slow once per long rest without using a spell slot, but it's probably not worth an entire invocation. I'd look elsewhere if I were you, like with one with shadows, which allows you to cast invisibility for free so long as you begin in an area of dim light or darkness. There's no denying that this is extremely useful, but I do think you can get a lot of the same things done with Mask of Many Faces and a little creativity. So having both may be a bit redundant. Sign of Ill Omen allows you to cast Bestow Curse once per long rest. 
using a warlock spell slot. Don't waste your time on this one. Thirsting Blade extends the Pact of the Blade option from earlier by giving you an extra attack when you take the attack action with your Pact weapon. If you took Pact of the Blade, you're taking this one too. There's no question. Then, as a general rule, I don't like taking features that require me to be in a terrible position in order for them to be useful. Tomb of Levistus has gotten some love from the community in the past since it can make you nearly invincible for a round by entombing you in ice as a reaction to taking damage. You then gain 10 temporary HP per warlock level, vulnerability to fire damage, and become incapacitated. This is only usable once per short rest, but that's not even the problem here. Presumably, when you thaw out, you'll still be in whatever trouble you were in before. Uh, no! Oh no! I personally prefer to take something else here and just bank on being picked up by the party healer if necessary, even though you may be able to combo this with Armor of Agathus in some situations. It's probably just not worth it, but feel free to tell me you disagree in the comments. Undying Servitude allows you to cast Animate Dead once per long rest without using a spell slot. While the flavor is on point here, you'll probably already have access to a familiar from either Pact of the Chain or Pact of the Tome, so having one free skeleton or zombie per long rest isn't something you'll really need at this point. Then level 7 unlocks our next batch of invocations starting with Bewitching Whispers. Not only does this invocation suffer from the old issue of being a limited one-time cast per long rest, but it's not even close to the most reliable crowd control spell that we could access as a warlock. It's a hard pass for me unless you really want to reenact the Thriller music video. See? There he is! Look at him go! <laughs> Threatful Word is pretty much the same story as Bewitching Whispers. It's a single-use spell per long rest, and it's far from the best spell you could be casting. Ghostly Gaze is a legacy invocation that I see a lot of love for, but outside of assessing threats through walls or closed doors, there's not a lot you could use this for. And unfortunately, the new Observant feat no longer allows you to read lips like it used to, so you can't even use this to eavesdrop on NPCs. On top of all that, you can still only use this for one minute at most in once per short rest. Regardless, it still could prove useful in dungeons, so maybe consider it if you're not sure what else to take. Relentless Hex could be a decent option for you if you're running Pact of the Blade and want a bonus action teleport into an enemy that you've hexed, but it certainly feels a bit niche. The Archfey Warlock Patron would already give you this kind of functionality and more if you want it, so you probably don't need this one. Sculptor of Flesh is one of the only invocations that require the use of a spell slot that I would actually still consider taking. Polymorph is just that good. It's a great option for completely eliminating an enemy from an encounter, and it can power up your allies on the other side if you'd prefer to do that. Still, we're sacrificing a lot to both take this invocation and cast it with one of our few Warlock spell slots, so I'm definitely not taking it every time. Some things are just better left to the other casters. Trickster's Escape allows you to cast freedom of movement on yourself once per long rest without using a spell slot. While I often hear about how good a spell this can be, I really don't feel like it's worth burning an invocation on unless your DM really likes to cripple you with difficult terrain, grapples, and other obstacles. Then, as our only 2024 option at this level, Whispers of the Grave allows you to cast Speak with Dead for free. This is a fantastic way to get information from your enemies without having to worry about holding back on those Eldritch Blasts. Naturally, I like being able to use this spell whenever I want without a spell slot, even if we're getting access to it a little later than I'd like. Oh, Cleric! I think the Warlock is dead! Warlock, tell us who it was that killed you. <laughs> <laughs> At level 9, your Warlock can pick up Gift of the Protectors if you already have the Pact of the Tome, but you probably won't want it. Taking this seems like a decent get-out-of-jail-free card at first, but I find its usability extremely limited, and a healing word from one of your allies can do this and more. This far into the game, a feature that keeps only one of your allies at 1 HP instead of 0 for one instance of damage, once per long rest, feels really lackluster to say the least. Life Drinker says you can deal an extra 1d6 necrotic, psychic, or radiant damage once per turn when you hit a creature with your packed weapon. This isn't a ton of extra attack power, but the real benefit comes in the form of spending one of our hit die and recovering the result plus our constitution modifier in hit points. I won't call this a must-have for Pact of the Blade users, but 
Resource management is a big part of playing a Warlock and guaranteeing that you'll be spending these resources even if you don't get to take a short rest is going to stretch your survivability pretty well. Then things get just a little complicated with Minions of Chaos, but trust me, it's worth it in the end. This legacy invocation allows you to cast the Conjure Elemental spell. When it was made back in 2014, this wasn't exactly the best pick, but the Conjure Elemental spell has been rewritten in the 2024 Player's Handbook. If your DM is okay with you using that instead, be warned. This is not the same as the absolutely broken Conjure Minor Elemental spell that somehow made it through the playtest. Visions of Distant Realms allows you to cast Arcane Eye without a spell slot as many times as you'd like to. This is a nice feature, but a familiar from the Pact of the Chain or Pact of the Tome will tick a lot of the same boxes for you, and it has even more usability. Then level 12 brings us just one invocation, but it's probably one you'll want to take a look at. If you're building a pure Pact of the Blade Warlock without multi-classing and you've already taken Thirsting Blade, you should probably take Devouring Blade as well for your third attack per attack action. You'd actually be getting this feature only one level later than Fighter, so I'd say that's pretty good. And level 15 presumably brings us the most powerful invocations in the game. So let's first consider the legacy option Chains of Carceri. Hold Monster is a very useful spell to have available for casting at will, but your targets here are limited to Celestials, Fiends, and Elementals, and you'll only be able to target the same creature once per long rest. This is so close to being a must-have option for Pact of the Chain users. Still, if you're facing a lot of these kinds of enemies in your campaign, it could quickly become a staple for you. Shroud of Shadow is another legacy invocation, and casting invisibility without a spell slot is definitely nothing to shake a stick at, and it's definitely worth taking if you want to replace your one with Shadow's invocation from earlier. And which site gives you 2024 vision? Seriously though, who doesn't want 30 feet of true sight? You should definitely always take this invocation so you can see through illusions, transformations, invisibility, any kind of darkness, and even look into the ethereal plane. It's really, really good. A lot of these invocations actually are, and they should be. After all, these features are going to make up about half your warlock playstyle. And if you'd like the other half, you can check out this full class guide here. But until next time, go out there and make some chaos. <laughs>